In this video, we're going to continue modeling our rocket ship and eventually take it to uh, UV and texture this as well. Um, so during the break, I was kind of, you know, looking around about this, you know, kind of taking a step back. And the first thing I, I think I want to do is make a slight change to this. Um, I do like my window here, but I kind of want to, like, give it that, like, bulbous kind of cartoon feel to it. Um, so, you know, to do that, I need to kind of back up. And you'll find yourself doing this from time to time when you work on things. And that's one of the main reasons why I recommend uh, making copies of things and backing it up. Thankfully, I don't think I'm going to have to do that in this case. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a copy of this and then kind of back up and break it back apart and then reassemble it to show you what I mean. Because I, I, you might not understand exactly um, my, my thought process here, what I'm at least thinking about trying to do. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, and add Control D, and I'm going to take the one back here that I still have rotation on, move up and zero it back out because it's always easier to work with things orthogonally aligned, i.e., you know, make so it's you know up straight, up and down, left and right, and so on. And I'm going to go ahead and snap this to some random grid off to the side while I work on this. Now remember from last video, I combined this. This is technically five objects all combined. Um, I'm probably going to have to separate this back out because I'm thinking that now that these little clamps, clamps are going to be too far in if I want to do like a, like a more bulbous window. So I'm going to have to separate this back out, uh, move these around, and then, um, and then put it back together with the combine. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and select this object and go up to Mesh, Separate. Now Mesh Separate, again, makes a lot of history that I don't really care about. Um, so generally, again, if I recommend after doing a combine or a separate operation, you immediately do a delete history. So I do that, and then I'm delete history. And the other thing about at least for separate, it automatically puts it into a group. While, while this isn't in the end of the world, um, you just got to be aware that it creates a, a null object, which is what this this icon here is. It's it, which is used for groups. Um, I'm going to leave that alone for right now because it doesn't it isn't breaking anything. But just you know, if you see those. Occasionally, sometimes you might have to go back in and delete them. So I'm going to go ahead and, and delete all those because I don't want them. And then I'm going to come back here. And again, certain operations will cause your pivot point to move. Separating is one of them. So I'll send the pivot point on this. Modify, center pivot. And I'm going to move this over here because I'm going to re just re-rotate to get the other three. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and create the like, like I said, more bulbous window uh, approach, and I probably could come in here and do this with this. It might work. Um, or I could do a sphere and stick it in here as well. Um, so, I'm not exactly sure which way I want to approach it yet. Definitely the sphere would be easier, uh, but it would take up more polygons. Um, yeah, I'll just do that. Um, so I'll come in here, same approach that we did at the top of the uh, of the of the uh, of the rocket ship. Remember back here, we did up here. Is I'm going to go ahead and make a cube, polygon primitive cube. Just drag one out here. Come back into the inputs, make it perfectly square. Doesn't really matter what what it is. I advise you make it perfectly cube, and then come in here and smooth it twice, and you'll get something that is. Pretty much a sphere, but not as much detail or so much poly count as the sphere ones. Now it's fine if you want to use a sphere and cut it in half; that works too. Um, I just, you know, wanted to talk, you know, show this method a little bit more because this is really useful if you ever want a much lower poly sphere. So I smoothed that twice, and I'm going to cut it in half. I don't need the back half of this. Again, if you want to frame something, you hover your mouse over that key, uh, that window, and hit the F key. It'll frame whatever you have selected. So I'm going to delete those back half of those faces by grabbing them and deleting them. And then I'm going to come in here and just, since I already snapped this to something, snap this one as well, then move back, and then now I'm going to, no, no, I don't know if I want to be that bulbous of a, of a window, but that's, you know, the idea here. Maybe something more like that. So you know, I'm kind of seeing if I like it or not. Maybe maybe not so much of a gap. I do think I want, want the gap in there because I want to be able to see these clamps. But maybe something like that. All right, that, that looks fine. Now I'm going to come in here and re-rotate these clamps back, and then I can combine the whole thing and then re-delete re the history. 
So again, you got to make sure when you're doing this kind of a uh, thing, um, the rotation, you need to, to move this pivot point to a central part that they're going to rotate around. That's why another reason why I stack this to a grid. So again, to, um, to, um, to move the pivot point, you hit the delta key, the D key, and I'm going to move this. And just from last like last video, D key activates pivot point mode. While I hold down the X key, I can snap to grid. So I'm just snapping it to a point. I can leave pivot point mode by tapping the D key again. And after that, I can just rotate. So I make a copy of this and rotate it. So Control D, begin rotating it. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, or negative 90. <coughs> and even if you remember from last time, if we hit Shift D, if it's an immediate thing we, we do, you know, other than the transforms, we can mess with the transforms, but if you don't hit anything else, you can hit Shift D to repeat the last use transform. So in this case, I'm just going to rotate it 90, 90, 90, um, and get all four of them back. So you can see, kind of looks like that. I'm just going to kind of compare. I think I do like that better. So I'm going to go ahead and just merge all these back into one by going to Mesh Combine. And then once again, delete the history. And you can see all that jump, the, all those null objects I was talking about are gone now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, hide. Well, I'll leave it there for a second so I can line it back up. But I'm going to eventually hide that one just because, you know, I don't want two of them, obviously. So I'm just going to kind of put it right about in the same spot. Rotate it with about you know two degrees, I think, or some or so. I could look on the other one. Move it in, and you know it obviously doesn't have to be in the exact same spot, but we want to try to you know you know get it close as possible. I'm going to select the old one and hide it. Control H, and there we go. We got this one in here. Let me double check here. Let's see if it looks good. It looks pretty good. All right, so I wanted to add this little bulbous little window there. Um, I still need to, as mentioned in the past, we look at our, 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 our little sketch here. I need to make the door, and I need to make this thruster ring there. And then we can move on to, to uh, UV in it, which is the process of um, laying out how a 2D object wraps around the 3D one, and then get to texturing. Though, honestly, the texturing one will probably be in another video. I'm hoping we'll get through to UVs in this video as well, or at least most of it. So let's start next with the door. Now the door is probably going to be a little bit tricky. Um, um, trick in the regards that I, you know, if I wanted to animate this, I mean, and have the door actually open and do things, I, I mean, I might, I'm, that, that could be a lot of fun, so maybe I might do something like that. But you know what, for right now I'm just going to assume this is going to be a closed model. So I'm going to go ahead and how I would approach this is I'm going to go ahead and make a cylinder. Um, there's, again, tons of different ways of doing everything in Maya. Um, but how I, I think I would go about doing this first is I would make a cylinder. It doesn't really matter what. Um, just make it so, so the size roughly like this. I'm going to increase the divisions. And I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. And this is going to be technically the top of the cylinder, this, this doorway here. So if we look at this archway, mine's not drawn that great, but you know it's basically a cylinder. So I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit. You know, I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So somewhere roughly like this. Here we go. And what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to delete all of this, really, except for one half of one side of this. So, and this, what I mean by this is I'm going to come in here and select all these faces and delete it, and all these bottom faces, and I'm going to delete these. Though we could shape these, we definitely could do that. But I'm going to start off with something like this. So. The only thing I kept out of this cylinder is this kind of shape here. So um, I'm kind of taking a page out of when we do the defense. I'm starting with a shape. Granted, I started with an object, went back to like a plane type shape, and then I'm going to eventually extrude this back out. But I'm going to get the general shape of this first just using a plane because that means there's less uh, vertices and faces to worry about. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude this because we can extrude on an edge. So I got we have these two edges, and I'm going to extrude them down and then make divisions as I go so they're nice and even. So if I hit Control e and grab this green arrow and pull down, you can see I can pull these down. 
Now, one option I've had talked about in the past is if we increase the divisions, we can evenly space these divisions out. Now, I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit more. You know, it's not going to line up because I think I'm going to shrink this back down, but maybe something like that. I'll come back and add divisions later. So you can see I've used the extrude tool, grabbed the green arrow in this case, because so I actually am going to go in world space down, and increase the divisions. Now, what can I do with this? Well, I mean, we can extrude this at any point in time, but I definitely want to come in here and at least kind of capture the feel. Again, I don't think I'm going to match my reference, but at least get the feel of it by scaling these and tapering them. Because I'm, again, ca very cartoony, very cartoony door here. So it's going to taper at the bottom of this, this area here. And I'm, again, I'm going to first try doing this with the same way we modeled the rocket ship. I'm just going to select those bottom um, edges here. And I'm going to go to the scale tool and turn on soft select. And again, soft select is the B key, Bravo key. And if you need to adjust your, your soft select, it's holding down the B key and dragging left and right. Um, I kind of, you kind of just kind of have to do this by feel. Yeah, we can go real cartoony. I don't know if I want to do uh, like this kind of S curving arch here, but that is kind of that is definitely very cartoony. So maybe I'll go a little bit bigger and kind of you know tone that down, maybe even bigger. It's getting a little bit like that so you know I might come back in here and just kinda adjust these ones back some kinda it's got a little bit of that arch, that's that S arch going like it's curving back which I don't mind and maybe undo maybe I'll go back and start again again don't be afraid to undo and try again what I do need to do is just turn up the uh, the soft mod before, before I go again and then turn that off and just do this this one down here by itself Again, you can double click an edge to get an edge loop. That's that's a little bit. I mean, it's now it's a little more straight um, there. Honestly, though, I think I don't know if it's extreme enough to be completely honest. Honest here, uh, when you're doing a lot of things in art, it's best to exaggerate. So maybe I'll go a little bit more. Back to that that what I said before, what I was trying to avoid. Um, I think I'll come up here and make this one a little bit wider. It doesn't take much. So I'm just scaling these on this one axis here, the x axis in my case, and getting them a little bit wider. So I'm reducing that. All right, that looks pretty good. The only thing I don't think this needs to be. And this, see, like I said, this is why I did a plane, because this will be a lot easier to do as a plane as opposed to, well, it's not terribly hard, it's just more, just more things. It's not that much of a difference, but I do I do find this a little easier for get this first. So there is my arch right now, my door. And then at any point in time, if I think this is done, it's not, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe scale this in here. I think I'm gonna squash it a bit in this direction. So something like that maybe. And maybe squash it too much. Something like that. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this. Extrude that. I don't, I'm not sure how much. I'm just going to maybe do some, like, just kind of guessing like that. And I'm just going to move it in here. I just want to kind of see. I'm going to eventually undo and get it back. I just kind of want to see what it looks like in place. So yeah, it definitely needs to be a little bit thicker, um, so I can stick it in more. Undo, scale it up. Remember, you can always send the pivot, and then come back in here, something like this. And then you're gonna, you're gonna see it in there. So this is gonna be my door. I probably would bring it down into this this section too, so that's probably what, where it's going to end up being, something like that. All right, so there we go. Um, this is looking pretty good. Now, I, I thankfully saw this rotation, so I could go back at any point in time and you know zero this out to do this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and and um, try. Um, See if I can do this at an angle. I think it's going to probably not be a good idea, but we'll, we'll go ahead and, and try. 
So I selected one face on this outer ed, uh, faces here, and then shift selected adjacent one. I'm getting that face loop here. I don't want the bottom, however, so I need to make sure I come back into like something like four key, like wireframe mode, and make sure I hold out control and deselect them because I don't want the ones down in here. So I just want these ones. So back to five key to go back into here. And I'm going to go ahead and use the extrude tool once again. And I'm going to add some thickness to this door. So control E, grab the blue arrow. We might have to scale the whole thing down, which is fine. But this is going to be my thickness part of my door here, the frame. I'm going to go to option mode because, yes, it is getting too big. Maybe scale it down a little bit, reposition it. All right, there we go. So I now have this frame here. And what I'm going to do with that frame is I'm going to come back and select that for key. We don't want both sides. So control. I'm just going to get rid of the ones I don't want. And again, wireframe is a useful tool. Make sure you're always rotating around, getting these different views. You can see I'm getting the ones I don't want. Back to the five key. Control E. Shrew this out maybe a little bit. And technically, I don't even need this interior edge anymore, but that's okay. I need it for the bottom. I could I could optimize this, but I'm, I, it's fine. Um, now why not? We can talk about optimization. So if you didn't need this interior edge, um, what you could do is you could collapse this edge right here, or you know use the target weld to bring this edge in, and then just delete this, this the rest of this. Uh, I'm not going to mess with it just yet. Cause maybe I might do some bevels. So who knows? Um, so I'll leave it for right now. So speaking of bevels, let's go ahead and do that. Double click these edges, making sure I have only what I want selected. All right, Control B, bevel. Tone down the fraction on this one, I think, a little bit. Maybe increase the segment by one. Getting that really cartoony door looking thing here as such. So there we go. Now, I kind of drew these horizontal lines in this, this reference, as you can see here. Um, I did that mainly to, to kind of break it up because it wasn't, everything was vertical in this. Um, yeah, you kind of, ironically, the, 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 the geometry does mimic that, but that would probably be something I would do with the texture. So you can see, kind of got this going. Um, I'm, what I'm thinking here is I might do a little bit of tapering on the bottom so it thins at the bottom as well. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it. Off, a copy off to the side in case I mess this up. Come back to this one. And I'm just going to go ahead and get these bottom verts down here. Make sure you get the right object though. And again, you can see I'm just kind of exploring this this a bit. I need to move the other one out of my way. There we go. Or I could hide it. Let's do that. It's even better. So I just want these, these ones down here. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and use my soft mod again, B key, and I'll scale like this. And then I'm, I'm going to come in here and maybe grab these edges. Or we could do a bend, you know, type of thing, situation where we, we deform it. So we could also, also grab uh, the bottom verts again. And do a rotation, which would cause it to, to uh, with soft mod, which would cause it to um, kind of do almost like a, a rubber bend thing, kind of like this. That's this kind of shape, arching shape. So that's just using a soft mod, um, mod and a, a rotate. I went too far, I think. And that's fine. What we can do is we can explore that, maybe move it back in some more now. And I can also grab this edge, this edge of this, turn off the, bit, the, the the soft mod and just bring this in. So you can kind of see it arching in, arching, but at the same time I just bring these, these faces in because we don't really, really even need to wear, in fact I don't even need these faces, I should delete them to, to save. This will, and the reason I delete these is one, these are not needed. And the other reason is because um, it'll 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 make it easier to understand what's going on with your your um, your UV when we get to that that part of the, the, the project. So I'm going to come in here and go ahead and delete the faces that are not being shown. 
because again it it's for optimization and it will um, make it easier to UV because we don't have to worry about texturing those faces at all. So that's fine to absolutely do that. As you can see, there we go. Oops, I'm not sure what happened here. It looks like I accidentally deleted a face. This is why we always rotate around. But this is great. I can show you what happens when you accidentally do this. So I've deleted this face here. And I don't, I mean, I don't want to undo to go back. Maybe I did a bunch of stuff, but I have a hole here that I just found. Um, we can append this polygon to bring this face back. We can also do a fill hole. It might, it might work on this as well. Um, but I'm just going to do a pen polygon tool, which is a different tool. Uh, it's found under Mesh Tools, the first tool on the list here. Um, it's called a Pen Polygon Tool. And what this does is when you click on this, all your border edges, i.e. an edge that isn't enclosed, is going to turn purplish color. Oh, they just get thicker now. Sorry. Uh, it turns purple after you click on one. So we click on one here, and we'll see the purple lines. Um, and what this means is now these are the corresponding edges that I can click on to... Um, draw a face. If I drew one to the side, it'd make a triangle. If I go all the way across, it will make a quad. So you can see I click on the opposing the opposing face. It doesn't matter which one I started. I did vertical, but you could easily just as easily do horizontal here. Click on this other one, and you can see it makes this like kind of pink color here, um, denoting where the face is going to be. If you make a mistake, you have to kind of commit this tool, which is always found weird. You have to commit this tool, then undo it. So to commit the tool, you hit enter. So again, if you make a mistake, I'll undo this, even though it's perfectly fine. I'm going to hit the G key to repeat my last tool, which is in this case a pen. If you made a mistake, let's say you click, oh my god, way down here. You can see it's really messed up. Uh, you can't undo for whatever reason. You have to commit the tool and then undo. So I don't know. I found that as a weird quirk of Maya. So I'm going to go click on one face, then the other. Now the other thing you need to watch out for, in this case you did it fine, is... Remember, we soften and harden edges on your normals, as we talked about in the previous lecture. So there's this door here. Um, I have it pretty much all set. Um, again, I could come in here and maybe make this door separate because, you know, like I said, if I take this into an, like an animation project, I think I'd maybe even animate this thing opening and closing. But I'll worry about that if I do ever make an animation lecture on that. Um, so there's my cartoony-esque door. I kind of like how it almost looks like a, you can see it almost coming out like a tongue or something, you know, something really, really absurd cartoon-like. So there's my, my, my door. Um, you know what, I mean, might even go bigger. Again, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm like, eh, you know, I'm going to see at least. So I'm gonna, maybe I see if I can get away with this being even bigger. You know, maybe move it up, scale it. I gotta move it out. It's a little, you gotta play with this a little bit to get it to work, but I think I want to go even more absurdly bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down and put this in, see if I can get away with it. Um, I have to pull the this back. Uh, I don't know if I want to do this it's too much this time. I'll leave it alone for right now. That's yeah, fine. Um, so all right, so we have um, our door, we have our window, really big windows compared to the door now. That's okay. And then what we'll do is we need to do this last piece on this. Like I said, I want to do like this thruster um, section here, but I want to put like gaps in it, like like uh, like a like a a three sided ring with you know like some gaps in it. Now I could do this a couple different ways. I could create like a cube and bend it and, and then and taper it and then duplicate that three times or what I'm thinking about trying here instead is creating a ring with polygon primitive um, pipe create a pipe here drag up and click and hold something like this and let's give it some more divisions I don't know if I mean I, ha I haven't done the math, but I might have to change this. But I'm gonna basically keep most of this, and then I'm, I want I want three holes in this. So let's see if I if I I just did thirty because it matched what I did for before, but I don't honestly don't know. So I, I'm gonna go to my top view, snap this, and then I'm gonna do some guessing here. Um, I'm just gonna delete some faces, and I'm deleting all the way through. So you can see I'm going to delete, uh, 
Ooh, let's see if this works. I'm going to go ahead and delete these three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like even numbers. Let's do eight. So I'll keep these three and delete these three. Eight. So I'm keeping eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Delete these three. And no, the math doesn't work. I should, uh, you know, like I said, I should have perhaps figured this out before. So I am short one, two, three, four, five. I'm short three. So if I do 33 and undo back, why didn't do any deletions? Let's see if this works. Or if my math is going to continue to fail me. I'm not concerned about them being which way these are positioned. So three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep those three. Delete these ones. I'll keep eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to delete these three. And let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Correct. Okay, good. So, you know, so what that looks like is something like this. And there are these holes here. I'm not, I don't know if I want that tall. But yeah, there we go. Scale that down. So how do we fix this? And this is exactly how we fix this is in the, um, when we fix the door. It's the exact same thing. Great thing, you know, how this tool kind of is already coming in handy. Um, except we have six faces to do. So we just got to do them one at a time. So mesh tool, pin polygon tool, click one face, then the other side, enter. And again, G key, the normals are messed up, but we'll worry about that later. G key repeats your last used tool. Go again, click on one, click on the other side, enter. And it doesn't matter which order you do these, obviously, and I'm just going to make sure I go through all these. Use the G, keep hitting the G key to repeat whatever your last tool was. And again, in this case, the pin polygon. Hitting enter as after I've, I've, I've clicked on each side and getting this these all sealed up. Now the problem is it's um, because Maya is trying to soften these ed faces because it's you know a cylinder. Um, it's like oh we want to be soft, um, soft edges, which makes it look rounder than it really is. In this case, we want these faces to be hard face uh, edges. So if you just select these faces and then go back up to mesh display, harden edge, it, it'll fix that right up. So that's that's what was going on. It's trying to continue to make that soft. Now, I think I'm going to do a little bit of tapering on this. Um, you know, maybe I'll come in and select these faces at the bottom. Go into my front view to grab these. Again, uh, I used a, a big box. I can go to the control, draw the box to get rid of the top half. Something like this. And we can scale these. And it will bring them closer together as well as taper them, which is kind of what I want. This is what I want anyway, so this works out. Um, so I was kind of thinking something like this. And the technique, I don't even need these top faces. So you know what? On practicing that this technique again, just delete those. Now the only reason I might I should actually have them do, I might keep them because I might use them for shaping. But once I get it shaped, um, I will, won't need them anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and move this into position. And again, I'm just using my top views in grid snap to help position and keep this thing all aligned on that, that spot. So yeah, I definitely want to make this bigger, whole thing bigger. Position this a little bit more. Let's take a look at it in this respective view. You know, something like this. Um, that looks pretty good. I might, you know, you know, I'm happy with it for right now. I might come in and do some bevels on the bottom though. Let's get those faces that I mentioned, delete them, then move this back up. And again, that's just saving me polygons. And then the only the other thing I might do is well, let's see what happens. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bevel it in object mode. I can't remember if it's going to yeah, it's gonna bevel the okay. I don't want it to bevel those. So we, I'm gonna have to select these these faces and these interfaces. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but let me come in here, grab those faces, and then so those bottom faces, and then I'm gonna grab these because I'm just gonna do them all at once. And the inner six ones in my case. Here, let's see, make sure I got them all. Yep. So I just don't want these other ones. And I'm going to do Control B for bevel and get a little bevel in there for all of those. And you know what? I think I like it pretty much default like that. 
just to add a little bit more of a groove in there. So, you know, it looks kind of interesting when we get the rocket um, burst there. You know, the flame of the rocket come out. All right. So I'm just going to do a last, you know, kind of look at this here. Got my door. Um, I mean, really, the only thing I think I might now, and you know, I'm looking at this. The only thing I have left is the door if I want to make it bigger. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do this again. I do like it. I think I do want it bigger. I have to come in here and do that rotate bend again. And that's good that you get to see these, um, these, these uh, methods here, you know, because, you know, I get to work through it. So I'm just using the soft mod in this, my case. And then I'm just moving these down. And I might come in and make this bottom edge even thicker down here too. That'll that is another solution. Oops, wrong wrong axis there. And then the other thing I can do is maybe select these faces. Um, I didn't give it too many vertical divisions, so I can't do too much of a soft. I can, but it wouldn't look quite right. But I can, can't really do much of a soft selection um, the other way around the uh, around the to make this round vertically. I just didn't give enough divisions in the doorway to do that. I could go, come in here and add divisions. I just you know you know at the end of the day, it's like we want to try to keep these this simpler. So here we go. I don't like this little there. I think it's not. It doesn't look quite right. So I can come in here and I'm gonna, oh, that's the door part. Maybe soften that up just a little bit. I.e. by you know get get it to kind of be a more transition. I don't mind it doing the like again. I call this the S curve kind of thing where it goes like this. I don't mind it, especially on a more cartoony thing. But I think it was just a little bit much. For my taste, yeah, you know, so I'm going a little more smooth like that. It's okay. All right, so it's a, the door's a little bit bigger. We got this door here, um, and there we go. All right, so the next step would be to actually start to, you know, if you're done, would be to actually um, to actually UV this. Um, granted, I have I also need to flip these around, but as I mentioned earlier. We don't want to do that until we UV it because you can take advantage and save yourself time. So this is a, a complex topic, um, UVs and texturing. A lot of people do not like talking about it or are doing this because it's you know it's 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 can be it can be not that fun. Um, what I recommend you do, um, Maya does have a built-in UV um, thing now. Um, I'll try it in a second here. Um, but you can also find a texture on, just do type in UV texture map, um, map and you'll probably find a, a, a helper texture that you can also use. Um, if you haven't watched any of my videos on materials and stuff, um, I advise that you, you do so. Because uh, I'm not going to talk about materials except for the most basic things here. So if you get a little bit lost because I don't mention something, I, I would refer back to those videos um, first and then come back and watch this part in UV. Um, but let's go ahead and, and talk about this a little bit more, UVs at least. So UVs again are how a 2D texture wrap around a, a 3D object. I like to keep using the analogy of wrapping paper around a Christmas present, especially if those Christmas presents are all, all weird shapes and not in boxes. You're trying to tell the computer how to wrap that, that Christmas wrapping paper or whatever birthday present wrapping paper around the object itself. So if I come in here and um, just Throw a texture on this, and again, we can do we can mimic this by just going into the UV UV set editor, and they have one that you can just load now. This little once you open this thing up, this is the UVs. By the way, um, every object gets every primitive object gets created with UVs, but unfortunately, as soon as you start moving it around, extruding everything, it all gets all out of it gets all messed up. So you can preview it with this little checker here by clicking on this. So Maya now has this built-in um, UV sheet here for you. And you can see that this texture here, um, right here, does not match this at all. It's, it's all jacked up. So this the purple here is the, what, what, how the geometry is being shaped around it. And the texture is what you would eventually make as a texture if you decide to have textures. You don't technically have to have textures. But definitely go, it definitely is nice to wrap around the object. So what we need to do is we need to re 
project these and move them around and try to make these purple areas here match more closely to the shape. Now thankfully there is just like there's primitive shapes there's also primitive projections. So you can kind of um, help your your you know save some time here by doing various projections on the object. And you don't have to do one projection per object. You can break the object by selecting faces or pieces of it and do projections individually. Now um, when you do that, you create uh, seams because every projection shell, what we call UV shells, will not line up here. Now, like I said, just you know, we'll, you know, you'll see that here as we go. So this doesn't obviously match us at all. So we want to do a new projection on this. Um, for example, I don't want this to be in the same projection, but I probably want most of this. I probably don't want the bottom of this to be in the same projection, but we can probably get away with most of this, just kind of how we modeled it, most of the projection being a cylindrical projection. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it all selected, and I'm going to do a cylindrical projection, which will look bad in some parts of this, but it will fix others. So with the whole object selected, I'm moving my UV editor off to the side here, and then I'm going to go ahead and go UV, and you can see under UV there's these different projections. There's automatic, best playing, camera based, contour stretch, and so on. I'm going to go ahead and cover some of the more basic ones here, which will go a long way in helping you. Um, I'm going to talk about cylindrical. Um, Maya's UV projection tools take a little bit of getting used to. Some people don't particularly care for how they work or they lose them easy. So. Um, just know that, you know, like I said, here, if you click on this, what will happen is it'll, it'll start a projection. So I do this, I click on this, and the next thing is this thing right here. This is the projection. And what it's it showing is it does a half a cylinder, because the back end, it's kind of more like, I want to call it legacy, but uh, like when you did like characters' faces or some things, you could project half of it, and then what you would do is you would duplicate the other half of the character's face or the other half of the object, and, and then, you, then it would automatically be UV'd, and they would overlap. Um, we tend to not do that as much anymore, but it's still it's still practiced. So what you can do uh, at this point is, you, you if you want to go all the way around instead of mirroring, so you can see it's already mirrored, it's kind of cool, um, is you can just grab this little red box right here, click and hold, and you can drag it all the way around. And what that will look like is on here, it is running the UV um, in this one. You see the repeats here, I'll talk about that in a second, but this is the area that you're concerned about. What's called the zero, which starts at kind of this grid here, to one. If you see these other um, repeat textures here, that means you have overlapping UVs in areas that are not, not supposed to be there, which it did. It got a little weird over here. And that's fine. Like I said, I'm going to eventually clean all this up, but you can already tell that this projection is better. It's not perfect. There's a lot of problems with it. But better than what it was before, and just you know. But there's some problems like you know here, and you can see why is this kind of more of a red color? Well, th this is in reversed; it's going the wrong way. Um, so we got to fix these things, or I should fix. We say we should fix these things. So let me go ahead and before I get to that part, let me go ahead and break this up. Like I said, I'm not going to probably do the sphere part or this bottom part in, in the same. Projection. I'm going to break these into different projections, and that'll probably help with some of this mess here. And to do that, all I need to do is select those faces and do a different kind of projection. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these bottom faces down here, just the ones on the very, very bottom, and I'm going to do another kind of projection. I can come in here and do a UV, and I can do a planar projection. I'm going to use the option box. Um, technically, automatic would work on this as well. But I'm going to go ahead and do a planar one. Um, what a planar one will do is if I click on planar option box, um, I can, I'm going to reset my settings, is so that way it matches your, yours if you've never done this. If I click on projection, I can choose the axis. And if you just look at your translate when you have the thing selected, in my case, oops, in my case, I have this green arrow pointing up. That is the direction I want to project. I want to project from the bottom. Another reason why we want to model everything orthogonally because it'll make these projections easier. The other thing I like to do, um, honestly, myself, and this is something I like to do, is um, I like to uh, 
keep, I think it's right here, keep the image uh, within, um, which will, what it'll do is we'll keep the projection of the cir circle um, to its scale. And oh, I projected it on the X. Make sure to change the Y, apply, and you can see it will keep the shape um, of the object. Now it's perfectly fine to move this out of the way. In fact, I'm going to turn this off because it's getting on my nerves. Um, you can see right there, it's projecting um, from the positive deck. This is reversed. That's why it's red. Um, that's not correct. Um, but it's it's a simple matter of flipping it, um, which all you have to do is, in this window, with it selected, um, do that. But um, I'm just moving it out of the way so you guys can see. So again, if you want to see the UVs, this is on and off. I find it hard to see it here. Um, there we go. I like, I like that. So I'm going to turn it off, this one off here, so I don't see the image, but leave the checker on there. Um, not sure what your guys' settings are, but the, those two little icons right there. Okay, so um, first thing is first. As soon as I did that, I created what's called two shells. Again, the shell is just a contained area of UVs. Um, so I have one shell here, one shell here. Um, this is a subcomponent in UVs. And in fact, the great thing is the UV editor works the exact same way as your um, normal um, viewports when it comes to at least translating and scaling. So I can hit the W key, I can hit the R key, and I can rotate actually as well. So I can do all these. And it has its own subcomponent modes. So if I right click in here, you can see it has vertex, face, UV, edge, and something called UV shell. So the cool thing is you can, if you want to, you can select your, your faces from here. Like what face was this? I can select them here, or vert, and you can see, oh, I can find it here, or vice versa. If I select this face, it shows up here. Um, so again, the, the new one here is UV shell. If I click on UV shell, there's a UV shell here, there's a UV shell here, and there's one more. This is probably the ball on top. I forgot about, and there it is up there. So that's its own UV shell as well. So you can see, I can get these kind of, and I, I, they will end up all in the zero to one at some point here soon, but they don't have to be there as you work. So you can see, there's that. And this is that top of that cone right there, which I don't like. That's this. So I'll eventually probably redo that one as well. All right, so with these shells, what I'm gonna do is first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this which is under Modify, Flip. So you want these all to be purple, or bluish color, whatever you want to call that. So that's its own thing. And I can scale this up and down. I'm just going to scale it, make it a little bit smaller, just put it off to the side for now. If we look at this in here, it, what we're looking for is as minimal distortion as possible. So you can see those squares look pretty nice and you know square. So we're, that's pretty good. Close this, don't need that. All right, and we can break this up and do this as much as I want, or you want in this case. So maybe this sphere up here, let's try selecting these faces and you can see, I can just grab them here. Let's try doing a different projection for this with these faces selected by themselves. I do UV, I can try spherical, which will probably give me okay results. Go ahead and try that out. And you can see, it's got a weird little thing over here, thing over here, but overall it came out pretty good. It's got this really nice clean um, space here. Now the and you'll get this. What's happened here is for whatever reason when it did the, the automatic projection, it flipped this one face and moved it. Um, and sometimes this happens. Um, I, again, I could come in here and flip this, but that won't really work on a single face, or at least not well. What you can do is you kind of have to kind of I'm not sure how to say this but you can you know kind of think about how this wraps or you know it's being un, is being folded you know 2d images being origami like this you kind of just kind of get used to seeing it but like this is inverted so what I need to do is grab these two UVs and bring them over here and you can already see it's now blue now if you go into edge mode you can also see if I click on some of these edges, this is a great example here, that these, sometimes when I select one of these, it selects the other one. What this is saying is these edges are technically the same edge, but in UV space, they can be split apart. So I'm trying to find where these were. So technically what this should be, and I'm just gonna kind of get it close, this should be kind of something like this. This should be connect, this could be connected if you, if you wanted to connect it, if you want you know, but granted it will create distortion, 
if you go too far. And it's a give and take system. It's really up to you um, where you want to put it. And the only thing I'm unfortunately unhappy about is that it decided to put the seam on top, but I could just come in here and rotate the sphere later or something or fix it another way. Um, it's not a big deal. Um, or I could try to do the exact same thing as it did down here, which will create more distortion, but again, I'm probably going to do it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this back together. So I moved them over, found out where they were wrong, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click click on this edge. You can see I'm just, I can select that edge. Actually, no, I don't want to do that because that will move these. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to grab this UV, hold on the V key, and move it to that point. So V is vertex snap, but if you're in UV mode, it will also snap to those. So now those are technically together. They're right on top of each other. Now I'm going to select these edges and go move and sew, or just sew. So cut and sew, move and sew. And what it did is it actually sewed them together. So now if I grab those UVs, they're, they're actually sewn together. I just didn't want to do, I, I, I wanted to move them first that way I know the UVs wouldn't move from there. Because if you do move and sew before that, what it will do is it will um, it will move them together, but it'll average. So uh, just yet, yeah, I just snapped them first and then I moved and sewed them. All right, so these ones here, you kind of saw me kind of exploring as I was talking, explaining the last thing. I'm just gonna grab these two outer UVs. I'm gonna scale them together and then Move and sew. So this way, that way, we're reducing. Now, there's going to be more distortion. That's fine. Um, at the top of the pole, you, uh, there is distortion. I mean, it's not perfect. And there is always going to be a seam. No matter what you do, there will always be a seam. Now, I could and probably should come in here and select these faces. And I could rotate this or something like this if I really wanted to kind of like even hide that seam more or that distortion more. I'm not going to do that, um, or at least not yet, because um, it, it does. It's not, you know, no point in getting it that far. So you can see this. I'm going to call this piece done. So I did a cylindrical map. Have this thing here. Um, this is not a very important part, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. And plus, it's not that important, so I don't want to make it that big. We'll talk about that more later. But I can scale these, and eventually you will have to fit all this on. Is there one space? So. If you want it all to be there, um, and I'm talking about like the doors, the windows, and everything, so this is going to be a very minor piece. So there's no point in really getting too concerned about this. Now the other thing um, is this thing here, this thing piece right here, because this is trying to incorporate this into the, the, cylindr the cylindrical map, the previous one I did. It's causing it to kind of break apart, and it's trying to trying to it's trying to solve everything at once. That's the problem with trying to do something like a cylindrical map on the whole thing. So like this piece, for example, it's a cylinder, it's a cone, but trying to do it all at once, it just didn't do a good job. So I'm gonna just break this again. It's kind of the same as the top sphere. I'm gonna break this into its own. Uh, it's just another cylindrical map, but I just want it its own shell. So if I just select its faces by itself and reproject it, it's going to automatically break it up off into its own shell. So I have these faces selected here. And then I'm just going to do another one, UV cylindrical, get this out of the way. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before, grab this all the way around. And then if I look at this, you can see uh, it's a it's a cone. <laughs> so it's pretty much pretty straightforward. So again, I just did that because I don't want to, I didn't want to try to keep it in the, attached to the, the, the main fuselage, which is going to be much bigger. And this is another case of this isn't that big or that important. I don't really see it needing to be that big on the, the texture sheet. So you can see I made that much smaller. Now the rest of this stuff is probably going to take up quite a bit. So you can see we got this over here. Let me move this more. Zero one. Now this looks nice, but you can see that there is some problems here. So for example, again, the red here, um, you know, you got some, you know, it's, it's, for the most part, it's very well done. It does, they did a great job. It's just, it's a few parts that it's just a little off. So what I do, this is how I, I do this. This is a nice little trick when you're doing very cylindrical stuff here. 
Um, there's more than one trick, of course, as well. Is what I do is I pick either the top or the bottom, doesn't matter which, and I grab those UVs at the top or the bottom. So again, I'm just going to drag a box, and I do this in the UV editor, grab the top or the bottom, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use shift and less than or greater than symbol or comma period shift period com, you know or shift comma um, will let you and this is works for everything by the way not just UVs you can grow or shrink a selection so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grow the selection hit shift period and I grew the selection so I'm grabbing the UVs and I went up and I'm gonna pull them down and what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just kind of using this to break this apart because some of these are overlapping, especially when you get to the red. Um, just kind of gauge this. And what you're trying to do is you want these to roughly, you know, I just went back to the single one. You want these roughly to be squares. That's the whole goal here. So again, shift period. And I'm just making sure that these are not, not overlapping. We're about to get to the overlapping one, shift period. And here it comes. There it is. Shift period, you can see it went away because I'm, I'm they, they were on top of each other. If I back up and do this again, zoom in, you can see it's before these were overlapped. They were like this, like that. That's what was causing it. So I just I gave them a little bit of space. All right, and honestly, let me see. Look here. So I'm just kind of looking at these these as I go. This looks pretty clean here. I'm not going to mess with this. I'm not going to mess with this. I'm not going to mess with this. Uh, this is a little stretched, but it's not bad to be completely honest. Um, let me see if I stretch this out. You know, bring this in a little bit. You know, just a little bit. There we go. You can see I'm moving up. Good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. I, you know, I don't really need to do anything until I get up to here. So I'm just going to hit shift period, shift period, shift period. And then we're getting up to here, this area. You can see I'm just growing the selection using shift period. And I'm going to bring this out a bit. And a little bit more. You can see there now. That's the bevel right there. You can tell that's the bevel. I did a couple shift periods there, grew that out, that selection out a bit. Shift period, shift period. Getting these not to be overlapping. In, in the editor, and you kind of see as I go. I'm just going to keep moving up. Shift period, shift period, shift period, because this is all fine. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Shift period, I get to here. Now again, I'm having this weird overlap section just by a little bit. So I'm just going to make sure that these are separated in the UV editor here. There are other tools for this. I just find moving these by hand just to be a little bit more efficient um, and overall uh, it's great practice for when you get to more complicated stuff when those tools ultimately those automatic tools I should say automatic they fail so I'm making sure getting some practice on this on something that's a little bit easier if you have a scenario like this when you get to like characters and stuff you know it gets a little harder so I just want to make sure you know how to do this all right, so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep moving these. I need to zoom out a little bit here. As you can see, there's not as many there. And I don't think I need any more. Up here, it starts getting, it's definitely off. So you can see that here we start getting to the stretching. So I can move these, shift period. We want to make these, these faces be closer in shape. So it's, this is a much longer thing here. So I want this face row here to be a little bit longer. Shift, I'm going to do shift comma. I'm going to back up one actually. Oh, uh, problem with shift comma is unfortunately it took away from the outer edge too. So I'm going to hold down control and shift and add the selection. Alright, shift period. Uh, this, this is the one I just did before, so I need next one is this one, shift period, and then I'm going to drag this down. So you can see these are more tapered, much longer.
You got definitely some areas here that are, are crunched up on each on itself. So I just want to get them not overlapped in here. So this is the very top part right here. And then what we can do is I'm going to come back in here and there's a still area along the top that's a little weird right there. What faces are you? It's this one. Okay. So we can come in here and move these. Give these a little bit more. We back up a little bit. Let me see. All right. We can also, um, it's also kind of, um, you can also go this direction as well. Oops, I, need, I forgot to end the whole thing. Problem with that is, you know, I'm, I'm leaving the zero to one space. Um, what's happening here is it's tapering. These are getting thinner. So technically what this should do is this should taper as well. But that, um, I, I, yeah, it opens up a whole can of worms. That I don't know if we want to go into this lecture. So this is good, especially up here at the top of this cone. I think this is good. Um, so I'm going to actually scale this down and completely uniformly and just get this into the zero to one. Something like that. So you can see this is going to take up most of my texture space right here. And it's really up to you where you want to go, um, how much you want to take up. I think I'm going to do something like this because you got to remember I'm going to add I'm going to add a window as well as three fins and these thrusters down here. And I'm going to put this all on one texture sheet. So I got to make sure that I, can, I have room for those as well. Now you could, of course, make multiple texture sheets, but I'm going to do this all on one texture sheet for future lectures. All right, there we go. So you can see we have that. It's all you read out. So when I go to actually paint a texture on this, it will will be distorted. Jury's out if it's going to look good, but you know it will be distorted. All right, so I'm going to come in here. Move this. I'm just moving these back to the zero to one, so that anything you want to fit everything you possibly can, and you want to, you know, generally you you, you make the stuff that's less important um, smaller. But if you have the texture space, I typically I fill that area up. There you go. And then I'll put you in there as well. In fact, I might even distort you like this because it's not that important. And then this one. You're not going to probably see much of this, to be completely honest. So I'm going to make this fit all down in here as well. I'm going to put the less important stuff on the bottom here. Now, I honestly still don't know if this is enough space, but you know, I'm going to call this one done. Now, you don't have to make all the objects one object to put them on the same texture space. Um, in fact, I don't plan on it. Plan, um, I probably could merge this. Um, I probably will merge this to this. Um, and I'll probably will merge the uh, combine sorry combine this to this as well. Um, I just um, for the windows I'm probably gonna make a couple copies first. Um, this one I can do now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this next and then I'll combine it to this. And combining won't break your UV so that's fine. You can do this at any point in time. So this is pretty much cylindrical as well. So we can probably get away with doing this as a cylindrical map. It did it did a better job on this, but I don't like what it did for um, the the at least the UV. So let's go ahead and do. Um, we'll go ahead and I'm sorry to duplicate this. We'll go ahead and uh, UV this cylindrical map. I'm um, probably have to do the bottom faces separately, but we'll see. Most likely, cylindrical map. Again, it's more cylindrical. Come around. Grabbing this, moving those, so there's those pieces. So you can see, there it is. Um, the inner, the inner ones are messed up, so we can break those up into two different sections. Um, as I thought, this, like I said, this will be a problem. So I'll do this. I'm selecting these bottom faces here. Create UV uh, planner. Option box Y. Just making sure. There, those are. By the way, uh, again, for the reason my it's, I have to double check my settings. I'm going to go to modify and flip these. There we go. And that should have automatically because this is the bottom part and this connects. Oh, never mind. I forgot about those edges. So they're still attached. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a second projection 
You know what I can do is I can just set, I'm just going to try something different just to, for a showcase this. Uh, soldier map will, will work, but you know what? I'm going to select these faces instead. I'm going to do an automatic map, which will probably look a little weird. Let's see what it does. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll go UV, automatic, and what this automatic does is it takes a projection at all six angles from as planar maps. So it's going to project positive X, negative X, positive Y, negative Y, positive Z, negative Z. And then it's going to say, okay, this face goes to this one, this face goes to this one. Um, it's great for non-distortion, but it creates tons of shells. Um, but the reason I want to do this is because I can show you more moving and sewing and things like that. So if I hit automatic here, I get something like this. So you can see, um, this probably won't work, but you can see um, it selected these, and it's really good on the, the, the distortion. The problem is, like, it doesn't look very good on this. So, yeah, this, this unfortunately isn't going to work. I thought this would work, but this isn't. We will do automatic map eventually on... Actually, I don't know if we're going to do automatic map on any of these. Now that I'm looking at these objects. I'm going to do a camera on this one. Probably a planer on this one. Um, I don't know, maybe this one we will. All right, anyway. So I was incorrect. I was incorrect. So this isn't going to work. Um, what? But maybe what it did do for us is maybe it might be easier to actually select the. No, not really. I was hoping it would be. So this is you. Okay, let's just do this again. So I'm going to go ahead and. Oh, selection shells. Let me go ahead and select this. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. I don't care because I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to separate the inner and the outer, um, outer uh, ones. Because that's a problem. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna do this as a cylindrical map. And yes, it's inverted. That makes sense because they're in the inner edges. So again, we can just come in here and flip this. There we go. And then I'm going to do the rest of these because that's the outer edges. And I might minus these, but we'll see. UV also cylindrical. But the automatic map didn't work. That's fine. Okay, so uh, let's see here. All right, so one thing it did do weird is it created a seam here, which there's no reason for it. You can see right there. If we click on the seam, and you denote seams by making them thicker white lines. I can move and sew these, and it'll bring it over here. So I select either one of those edges, modify, sorry, cut and sew, move and sew. Brings it over there. You can see, I don't know why I did that, but sure. All right, so we have these. Um, it didn't do a very good job on the shape. That's fine. We can probably do the, these all at the same time. Oh, oh, let's do the inner one. It looks like it did a seam on the inner one first too. Right there. So, so this one also move and sew. Cut so move and sew. All right, so we can grab all these shells at once because they are roughly the same. Granted, not this interior one. And I'm going to scale these down. So. Keep going, keep going. No, oh, there we go. Keep going. All right. Other than the, other than the, the this internal edge right here, this is looking good. So these ones actually might make good for automatic maps. So there we go. All right. So maybe I'll do these one. Oops. Select these faces. Uh, these ones right here. Can't tell which ones I've selected and which ones I don't. So you can see what's happening. It's it's I think I got all six. It's what's doing is it's I got something I didn't mean to. What it's doing is the six faces are literally super thin here. And yes, we could come move them here, but I think it's best we do an automatic map on these. 
And yeah, those six faces are really the ones that are strange culprits. So you can see. That, that, so on. Now, if you wanted to attach these, we could try to attach these. I'm going to save this because I'm going to make a mistake. So what we could do is we could come in here and attach this. So I could try to keep less shells, so it's a little bit less. Do like a move and sew there, so you can see. What you want to do when you do this is you do want to get these to be roughly the same size because you know I did them as different projections. So they're by default not going to be. They're not going to share the same size. There is a setting for that, but I didn't have that on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn these um, here. Um, actually, I don't know if it's there for automatic. It's there for planner. That's what we did with when we did the bottom of the the rocket. So I selected this edge. I could also just manually move and sew these, move them, and then do what I did for originally. So a little bit smaller, just a little bit. You don't have to do this. I'm just you know giving a shot. So there you go. That one looks okay. Uh, move and sew. There we go. And then let's move this one out of the way. And then I'll do this one. Um, modify, I'm sorry, cut and sew, move and sew. G key, G key, G key. And then we got these. Now, if you wanted to, you can put these on, especially if you're not doing normal maps, um, you can put certain things that are share the same thing, um, the same overlap them. I don't know what I plan on doing in the future, so I'm not going to overlap them. I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to move them all as much as I can. Something like this. So I have the interior edges here. Now actually, you know what? I might be able to... Oh, okay. That was incorrect. So I was gonna ask, maybe I can move those in there. So I have these now, and I have this bottom piece as well. So I'm just going to move these off to the side real quick. And then what? now that I'm close to being done with this, I'm going to go ahead and select this object and this object. And I'm going to combine, merge these, sorry, mesh combine these ones together. And again, whenever you do that, delete history. So these are now one object. And now I can, I can at least when I do this, when I grab one object, I'll see all the UVs because it's all one object. As I mentioned earlier, it does not break anything yet. Um, I'm going to leave these go like this. Um, you know what? I might grab this and bring this over here. Ironically, this will you know fit really nicely. So, all right, there we go. Put you right here. There we go. And then, you know, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with these yet. I'm not wor too worried about it. Like I said, I need, to, I still need to do the fin and the door and a bunch of other stuff. So, I'll, you know, these will probably get, at least this will, these will probably get way smaller, I'd be completely honest. I should probably move these out of the way because these are, these don't need to be that big at all. So I'll move these over here. And then I'll, I'll worry about these after. Again, because I want to kind of get a good look at everything first. So this one's done. The main fuselage is done. Uh, let's go ahead and do the Let's do, go ahead and do the, 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 this piece here. So in this piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a little cheating method. I'm going to select this. Oops, I'm going to select this object here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my camera. And my goal here is to make this as straight on orthogonal as possible when I'm looking at it through my camera. And then I'm going to do UV. UV based camera based and what it'll do is it'll project straight through through that now what it does unfortunately it projects straight through like i said this side's invert but again how we mentioned earlier if we come in here we can actually cut these uvs or select these faces separately and and get them out of the way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to freeze it if it wasn't frozen already which mine is zero i'm just going to get this out of the way so i can see what i'm doing and you can see Okay, well, first off, I don't need this face. We mentioned this earlier on other things. If you don't need the face, you can save UVs. Because, again, 
look at they look at this. Oh, well, you can't see it on that one. We need to find somewhere to put all these faces. So that's why I said one of the reasons to deleting faces on the inside is less faces to place the UVs. All right, so there we go. All right, so we already fought that battle. All right, so I'm just kind of looking at this. The projection did an okay job on the base face here. It's getting a little bit of stretching right here, but you know what? It doesn't look that bad. The one I want is right here, it, this top face here, and this. So basically, this area right here on the top. So what is that? One, two, three, four faces. I'm probably gonna do those as a different projection. The bottom foot here, and then the interior as well. So I mean, we can just grab these faces and reproject them. That will break it from this, or we can we can select these edges like I did here and cut these edges, and then that would be also separate. Um, I think it's easier for most beginner students or beginning to a UV artist to do this by um, doing by faces. It's just easier, I think, for them to do it. So I'm just going to select these faces, and then I'm just going to I'm just going to do a planar map for right now, or sorry, an automatic map for right now, just to get them separated. Um, I don't plan on it to be an automatic map. I'm just going to Boom, get them out of the way. So now you can see they're separated. And then I'll do the these other faces as well. So I'm going to hold down shift, double click that, that one. Oops. Let's, uh, let's, okay, let's just go ahead and grab it from the a different view. Might be easier. All right. Or not. There we go. There we go. I think I got that better that time. Go back into my view here. All right. Um, let me turn this off. It's getting hard to see. If you close your UV editor, it'll also turn this off. Or you can just turn it off right here. Looks like I accidentally have some pieces I don't want. So this is not easier for me. There we go. Let's do this one. Again, it doesn't really matter. I can do this in, in as many steps as I want. Um, you know, just I don't want these ones. I'll just do another plant automatic map. I'm just trying to break these apart. Like I said, I don't really want them to be finalized. I'm just trying to break them from this thing as well. I'll turn this back on. Oops, wrong one. So I think I need one more set of faces. I think I, I want to get rid of these ones too. And did this select anything I didn't want? Doesn't look like it. All right. And this might be weird, but like I said, all we're doing is breaking this apart. So we have different shells. So now if I have this shell apart, looks like I still have one somewhere. I do. It's right here, technically. Let me try cutting this. You can also try to break things apart like this way. So I selected that edge. There we go. So it was because I, I, they were sharing a UV right here. I had to cut. It didn't matter which one. I had to select the edge or just this point right here, and then use the um, cut. So cut to get rid of that. All right. So now I've broken these into their own shells um, as such. So this one, all I have to do is flip this one. So I can just grab this one and flip. And then that one's done. And then what I can do, I have lots of options here technically. I can select these now because they're all separated out. I'm just going to select them all at once. And then I'll, I'm going to see what automatic map does. Granted, I also might do a cylindrical map on this, but let's do automatic first. And it doesn't look that bad, actually. Automatic map did a pretty good job. So what automatic map did is it did looks like it put all of this in one one shell, which that's not bad at all. And then this is probably the back underneath part. Yep. And then we got a few strays here. Like that's this one. So you know this isn't bad. This is actually a really good projection. Um, so yay for automatic map. So I'm just going to come in and force this. And yes, this is going to create a little more distortion. But this, I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, yes, you can have as many shells as you want, but. I tend to try to try to keep the shells limited so it's easier to paint. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this one together. Move and sew. And then this one is attached to up here, looks like. 
I mean, same thing. I don't think we need to honestly get so so oh so clean on this. So this looks this looks pretty good. Um, the other thing I might do on this one is um, just because it's got this kind of shape here. I'm just gonna maybe rotate this. You can um, use modify rotate. It looks rotated and G key. So I might do something like this. That way they will ideally save space down the road. And then this one is attached to the bottom. So we can actually put this right here too. You can actually select these two edges right here. Boom, so. Something like that. We can also free rotate these. Um, so let me just use move and rotate. This just rotates in 90 degree increments. So you can see I can also just free rotate these as well. I tend to avoid doing that, but it's not the end of the world. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first off, you know, delete the history on this because I like to delete the history. Move, move and move this back. So because I froze transformations, I just type zero there, goes back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ballpark my UVs at this point. I kind of have. I should have did the door first, but I'm going to go ahead and. Um, and I probably will. I'm going to, I'm going to select both these objects. You can see you can select one object and the other, and you can see both of the UVs at the same time. And then if I come in here and use UV shell on, on the editor, it doesn't turn off these ones. So you can actually get in here, and even though these aren't the same object, I can get in here and kind of do this. So I know already off the top that this is probably going to be much smaller. In fact, this needs to be way smaller. For these, um, I'll I want to keep the fins at least relatively the same size. Um, I might have to free rotate these, like I said, kind of get something, you know, tighter. You know, something like this. Um, Maya does have an automatic layout program. Um, uh, UVs, uh, it just doesn't, it just doesn't do a good job of them, unfortunately. So you know, something like this. You know what? This is, you know, I'm just going to call this good for right now. It's nowhere near close. I just, I'm going to have to make the other ones and get all the other stuff made before I can really finalize this. So you can see I'm kind of getting this all positioned one at a time. All right. Um, so the other thing I need to do is is I can now actually duplicate this if I want to. And um, I will go ahead and do that first. And then we'll go ahead and do the, the, the window and the door. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this first. So this would be kind of backing out of a modeling thing. So I'm just going to close my UV editor. Um, <coughs> uh, I don't remember if I made a copy of this thing somewhere. I think I did. That's an old one. At some point, if you want to delete them, go ahead. I mean, I'm going to keep it in the copy. Let's UV. There we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and duplicate this. And again, I already have the pivot point at the, at the, the top of the, the rocket here. So I'm just going to duplicate this here, and remember this take advantage. I'm going to do 120. So I'm going to, remember I mentioned earlier I was going to do three of these, and 120 times three is 360. So I'm going to do 120, and then I'm going to do Shift D again to repeat this. And you can see again, I, I didn't think it was going to be correct, but you can see there we go. Now I'm just going to select all three and rotate. To, uh, maybe I'll rotate them. Um, actually, I'll merge these together. Combine these first. That's why I made a copy, just in case I ever need to go back. Combine them, then rotate them by what? Let's say 45. Uh, ooh, let's take, check something. We did something. All right, I don't know why. The pivot point's way over there. Let's undo back. See what, where I made my mistake. These polygons are all correct. That is correct. And then if I combine this, for some reason seeing this in the object, I must have did a, a, a logic error myself here. Okay, that's fine. I'll just free, free rotate it. And then, because I don't know what, or I can come in here and add 30, what is this? Would it be 30 degrees? 30, yeah, 30 degrees each one of these. So 30, 150, 
and then 270. There we go. Now I, I can combine the rocket with the rest of the rocket. So something like that. Combine this all. Mesh. Combine. Delete history. And if we look at this in the UV editor, right now, these UVs are all on top of each other. See? Minis are well. Um, if you're not doing normal maps, this is fine. In fact, this will save you um, time and, and, and memory on texture maps, if that is the case. If, but if you are doing normal maps, you do need to move these off each other. But for right now, I'm just going to keep these um, on top of each other, and then I'll, I'll worry about moving them after later. All right. So there's my object. I only got two more pieces to go. The door and the window. Um, let's go ahead and start with the door. A door would either be a planar map, Z. We could do another camera based one, or we could do an automatic. I'm going to start with the planar map, Z, and see what that gets me. So I'm going to bring back up my outliner here, UV editor. You can see this is really broken from the default one here. UV, planar map, option box. I'm going to do Z, project along the Z, and project. And again, you can see that did a much better job getting that door part. It's going to stretch along the areas that are, you know, you, you, like these ones. Um, this would probably be a cylindrical map at that point, but it's done. It did a great job on um, the front and the frame of the door. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to leave this face maybe one or two more of them and I'm looking here maybe even maybe even this one just because I don't want to I don't want to make so many projections but I'm definitely going to make this outer fa faces here this outer faces here a cylindrical map oops there we go so if I select those ones and go UV cylindrical it's going to project it, and that's kind of good that we got this one. It's projecting it the, the wrong way. So what you can do is if you ever projects it the wrong way, this little T at the bottom will allow you to go into um, the editing mode of the UV. So if I select this here now, it might be hard to see with all the blue going on, but there is my rotate tool now. I can click on this, and I can rotate. You can see in my channel box, I'm already seeing numbers here negative 90 and you can see I kind of I can kind of get this closer so you can see it's projecting it and even though it looks weird here it's projecting it looks really good along here now you have to make that choice if you want that um, or if you want to e ease your painting um, I'm not sure what's gonna happen if I try this but I'm gonna go ahead and try this if I select these, this shell here we can try unfolding this shell and seeing what kind of results we get and that is found under um, Modify Unfold. I'm going to click on the option box because I don't know what my settings are. I'm going to reset my settings to the default. And I'm just going to leave it this as is and see what happens. Click Unfold. You can see it just basically kind of stretched it out, but it kept the same exact idea. Um, but it's it's definitely preventing the stretching. It's got a little, little warpy thing going on, which I find weird. Um, the other thing you can try doing is it would not it would look weird um, in terms of the stretching I think but it would be really easy to paint as you could also um, what's called um, unify these fa uh, faces if I remember what the word I can't quite remember what it was called let me double check here unitize I think is what it's called unitize these ones um, I'm going to save okay so this backfires if I select this one, you know, what Unitize does is it makes them all perfect squares. And then what you would have to do is you would have to sew them back together and then kind of stretch them as needed. Um, I'll just do it real quick to see to show you. Um, so if I try this one, you can kind of see, let's take a good look at it before. It doesn't look bad. It's going on a weird angle, but it's not doesn't look bad. Obviously, I need to notice now problem with my edge here. Let's go ahead and take care of this now. 
because that's going to affect the UV. And then the bottom ones can come in more. Uh, I'm not going to really, I'm, I'm splitting hairs. And look, I found extra faces I don't need. Let's get rid of these faces. Uh, okay. All right. All right, let's try this again. U, uh, UV shell. And then I'm going to go ahead and unitize these. I'm going to modify unitize. Put them all in one square. Yes, it looks awful right now. And then what you do, I'm going to move out of the way. And we're just going to select this edge ring. So if I come in here and select this edge ring, select an edge. Um, I think I did this once during the last lecture. Hold on, control and right click and hold. You can go edge ring utilities, to edge ring utilities, to edge ring. And you can see it selects the edge ring. Now because this doesn't have, um, it's not a complete um, circle or anything like that, we don't have to worry about creating a scene because it already has a scene built in. So this is all I have to do for this particular example. But sometimes you have to deselect one because if it was like a, a cylinder, um, it would basically collapse in and on itself. For look, it look really weird. So if you ever do like a complete cylinder, you'd have to deselect one of them. But in this case, I don't have it completely going around. I can just select the edge ring and then move and sew. And you can see these are. This would be very easy to paint. Um, obviously, it's way too big, but let me go ahead and scale this down. Let me select the shell first, and then scale it down. And you can see that looks pretty good. It looks really good, actually. I like the way that, that came out. Um, it's stretching a little bit there. Let me scale it up. So you can see that came out really good, in my opinion. Um, and that trick is um, one I've used a lot on cylindrical shape uh, objects. So again, what I did is I unitized those, those faces and then I'm scaling to get the distortion the way I want. So I'm just move that off the side for right now. I want to try to get this in one more shell, even if I create a little bit of distortion, because I just want, I don't want to create a lot of shells. Um, it tends to get bulkier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these interior faces, um, go into UV mode. Um, you can switch a face to UVs by right-clicking in, I'm sorry, control right clicking inside the UV texture editor and going to UVs, two UVs, and I'm going to scale these UVs in. This is kind of what we did before with the, um, the bottom of the rocket. I'm just doing it from the inside out. You can see I've already fixed the, the problem that was under here. Yes, it's stretching, but it's the same idea. We got really small, um, and I just grew the selection by hitting shift period there, small. Oops, I grabbed the wrong uh, scale to the option there. There we go. You can see we grabbed those. And I'm not sure what's going on over here. Let's take a look. So it looks like for whatever reason on this side, I did something weird. They actually did it on the other side too. So technically, I mean, I'd, I'd have to go just continue the process. I, mean, I deselected, so I'm going back to shell, to shell. Or sorry, to UV, to UV. I'm going to grow. These are all fine. These are all fine. These are all fine. These are all fine. I think we're at the right spot now. Uh, let's scale this in. There we go. You can see it fixed that one too. So it's going to have a little bit of distortion, but I, I think in this particular case, the price is worth it um, to not have so many shells. And I could come in here and tweak this up. Uh, maybe even try the unfold on this. I'm, I don't know if it would work on this so well. But let's give it a shot. Uh, what you can do is you can do uh, unfold. I'll actually, let's select the shell first. Uh, unfold. And it, let's see what it did. Sometimes it does a great job. Unfold and me and my, at least for me and my, it doesn't do, and it did a great job this time. So unfold came out really nicely on this one. So actually, I will keep that. So again, that, that is fun under modify unfold and that was just the default settings I didn't even adjust that at all um, the door now since I am not 100% sure if I want to try to eventually move this to an animation project lecture down the road I don't think I'm going to combine this shape um, I'd actually have to go remodel it to be completely honest maybe I should just combine it I'd have to remodel this section if I wanted to, to do any sort of animation on this um, 
But you know what? I'll leave it separated out. I won't combine it. Um, to, I'll, I'll eventually put it in a group. So I will leave that alone for right now. So I'm going to move these off to the side. I'll worry about getting these all together later. One last thing is the window. Ooh, this one, let's save the funnest one for last here. All right, let me go ahead and let's see what we're working with here. Let's see what this one is. Okay, this is this. Okay, we got a lot of fun stuff here. Now what we could have technically did is we could have, before we put this in here, I didn't bother to do it, but the clamp, same thing with the, we did with the, the fins. We could have UV'd it before and did the clamps. That would technically save time there, but we, I didn't do that. Uh, we got this piece. It's all broken. Okay, so we need to, you know, this is going to be several projections to get this working. Um, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one based on camera. So I'm just going to move this to position this as orthogonal as possible. I'm going to go UV camera based. There you go. That one's projected. That one's easy. That easy peasy. That one's done. All right. Um, I'm going to probably do this cylindrical one. Just double click those faces. That's its own sub object. Probably do the same thing for this one. Do it camera based. I'll have to do some editing after the fact for this one probably, but we can get going here. All right. That one looks pretty good starting out. Same problem. Very common problem here. Um, what you're doing is you can see it's overlapping, but you know what? Let's give our unfold another chance here. Um, unfold, and you can see, you know, now I'm showing you the easy ways of doing things. We can unfold these and totally um, wrap these around, and it does a, did a great job of that. All right. Um, still, you still need to do the. I still recommend you do the projection first. Uh, I don't know if it makes a difference. You know what? We'll test it on this one right here. I'll just straight up unfold this one because I don't know if it does a projection on top of the unfold. And then I'll do a projection then unfold. And you see it does this kind of strange looking thing. But what I'll do here is I will um, I will do these based on camera I think. Just to kind of du to duplicate what we did last time. UV camera based and then then I'm going to unfold this and you can we'll, we'll test this together unfold and yes it definitely does something different you can see it doesn't look good either way the unfold didn't work in this case but you can see how doing a projection first um, does change how the unfold works that's all I wanted to test there so let me undo that so what I'm gonna do is the projection looks pretty good here honestly um, what I might do on this one is I'm cheating. If I select these edges here, you know, I went into wireframe. Yes, you do get used to seeing this mess. But the other advantage is I know where the seam is because this, remember I cut, this face doesn't exist back there. What I can do is just scale these up in this one. And maybe move them a little bit around. So I'm, I'm selecting the edges in here. Back to view here. You can see it's not great, but what I want to do is I'm going to do the unfold again, but I'm going to try it one other way. So I just kind of got this edge the way I wanted, and I might actually break this apart because uh, this might be a pain to really UV this all a bunch. I'm going to go ahead and try to unfold it again, but I'm going to use the option box, and I can't remember if this is under like uh, unfold. Uh, no, it isn't. But under legacy unfold there is a pin UV border one option here let me reset this you can pin the UV border and then you can apply this and you can see what it does and this may or may not work and it doesn't look great but it definitely doesn't look bad either so you can see what it did there and this is this edge and it's very sort of there and yes I could spend a lot of time worrying about that but Let's be honest, you're not going to see these sides faces too often. So I mean, I might just scale this down, position this a little bit better, and I might just call it call it a day. Um, I'm just getting because I don't want to spend that much time on that. So let's go ahead and do what I should have did is did all these at once. So let's go ahead and re... Don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to... I'm just going to re... 
do these real quick. Okay, this is negative 10, so let's just do this. Put this is a zero. Just because I want to save some time, because I think this will actually save some time, is I'm going to go ahead and set, uh, set mesh separate this one. I'm going to delete these three. Oops, not the ship. That would be bad. I go ahead and go back into wireframe mode on the front view. There you are. I need to snap this to a grid, any grid. There we go. So we'll go here. And then I'm going to set this pivot point. Uh, D key for uh, for pivot. Hold on the X key to snap the pivot point as I move it. D key to exit pivot point. And once again, duplicate. And then 90, shift D. Shift D, Shift D. All right, remember what that does is I did one of these. So you can see all the UVs are fine. Not great, but okay. All right, so now that's that's done. I'm going to recombine these all back together. I should combine. Set a pivot point, delete the history. Move it back roughly, and I rotated almost negative 10. Uh, I didn't bother to check the dimension where it was on the, the position. That's not too much of a concern, I think, to me. Because again, I'm not matching that. So negative 10x. And I'll just put it back in here. Is there anything in the back? Nope. Okay. Move it back in. That looks pretty good. All right. I think that, that actually will save us time, to be completely honest. All right. So let's take a look at this in the UV editor. See what this looks like. So we got these pieces. Again, if you're worried about the, and these are overlapping currently, but that's okay. This came out good with the, the, the unfold. So this one was great with the camera based one. Um, if you plan on having one more than one um, window, of course we'd want to duplicate this as well. I don't know if I want more than one window. Uh, they might look a little much with a bunch of windows, but you know what, let's take a look. Um, let's move it. I'm gonna move this off the side here, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna duplicate this to keep a copy, and then I'm gonna freeze transformations on this. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can rotate based along the center point of the, the vertical of this this uh, rocket. Um, but that's I mean, making me lose my rotate 10. And you saw how I just used that to get there. Now you could remember this number, you could write it down, you could always rotate it back, but I just made copies. Like you saw, I just made a copy, hit it, moved off the side, in case I ever need to go back. So I'm gonna freeze the transformations, and what that's gonna do, again, is zero this out. And I want this to be zero, so I can do the same duplication technique trick that we've been using in this whole, this whole lecture series. So I move the pivot point here, um, maybe I'll do Control D, and maybe I'll do like a 120. Maybe I'll make this the inverse of the uh, of the the the, uh, the the fins. So I'll do 120 and then Shift D again and get that and see what this looks like. So it's kind of inverse of the thing, and that looks kind of cool actually. I don't mind that. I don't know. I don't know if I like that or not. I haven't. Jury's out. Um, you know what? I'll go ahead and leave it there for now because it's always easy to delete them. I don't I want to get rid of them. So I'll go ahead and keep them for right now. So the rocket flies. You got this this three. Gives it some things. I mean, I could do something else. Maybe put something else on these two. Let me see. Let me go ahead and select these two. Turn them on and off. Simplistic rocket or complex rocket. Eh, you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and leave them off for right now. But that's okay. We tried it. Actually, I'll hide them. I'll bring them back and I'll hide them. So that way I change my mind. Okay. So I have that, I have everything I need. Again, the only thing that I really don't, not, I'm not sure about is the door, because if I ever decide to animate this, and I want to, you know, I'd build on this door, I could put this in a group. Um, but honestly, I'd probably have to do a lot of modeling again, so it would actually make sense just to combine this whole thing. So you know what, let's just do that. Select everything here, mesh, combine. 
So if you're interested in learning more about groups, you'll have to wait for, oh, look at one of my other videos where I talk about that, because I don't think I'm going to be using groups in this video. So combine this, once again delete history, you can see we have one gigantic rocket ship ready to go. Um, the only thing I need to do here now is in the UV editor, with the rocket selected, I need to get all of this into the 0 to 1 space, if you wanted to keep it to one texture, which I very much do. Um, so, and I don't want things to overlap, so the other thing I'm going to have to do is, just in case I ever set it to normal maps, so the other thing I have to do is move these, so they're, the ones that have duplicates, I have to move it so they're not on top of each other. And again, you can technically tell Maya to do an automatic map. I don't think it does a great job, so I recommend you do this by hand, personally. Um, I really don't want to... Um, the fuselage is going to take up the most space, so I really don't want to mess with that. I think I'm going to shrink every everything down here much more to make this work. Now, this is when you have to start making choices. What's important? And generally... You know, the bigger shapes take up more space, that's normal. Um, this door is probably the next most important thing. Oh, the fins are the next most important thing, and the door is the mo most important thing after that. So let's start with these things. Let's start with the fins and this door here. So this door is probably going to be come down a bit, quite a bit more. Maybe something like that. I, I think it's going to have to go even smaller, to be completely honest, but we'll get there. We'll figure that out. And then, you know, like I said, this, this thing is not as important. Um, it's the trim around there. And I'm just going to come in here, modify, rotate. And I can even squash this if I want to. So you can use, remember, I made this with Unitize anyway. All right, so something like that, maybe. Kind of eyeballing that. And again, this is all mutable. You can change this after the fact. Um, this is, you know, semi-important. But honestly, if it takes up this much space, that's pretty big in terms of this. So I'm going to put that there. Um, we have four of these. So I'm going to come in here and select one shell. And what I might do is, again, just because it's got a slight angle of this, just one way you you can save memory or space where Maya will not do half times. So I'll rotate this twice. Move this one, next one. And this next one. And then modify, rotate twice as well again. Uh, these are obviously very small, so I'm going to make these just small for right now. Put them over here. This is the inside of this. This did a good job, but you got to remember, most of this interior part is not being seen. In fact, I could have deleted it. Um, really, well, I can't delete it because we see a little bit right there. I could cut it and then delete the rest, but again, I don't think this is important, so I'm just going to, you know, make this, you know, we'll just make this fit right here. Um, all right, there we go. So you know what I might do is I might grab these, modify, rotate, put these right here, and get them to fit. What else do I got? I could also put the could have put the sphere thing in there. Put this right here. You can see I'm I'm, I'm coming in here and really manipulating these things to kind of get them in here to save as much uh, texture space as possible. This thing is really not that important. This is probably going to be mostly a solid color with a little bit. I'll place that later though. Whew, this is getting tight. And these fins are actually much bigger. So um, we might have to do something. You know, like I said, I'm just going to select these. And there's actually no guarantee that I even got the um, correct ones here. So here we go. Maybe I'll do something like this. There's also, um, I forget where it's at, there's a um, toolkit. Uh, 
I don't remember where it's at. I don't use it too often. There is actually a, uh, oh, here it is over here. It came up automatically on the side. Um, there is a toolkit that allows you to do a lot of these same options. I just don't use this as often. But under like an arrange, for example, um, or uh, transform, we can do a lot of these things. You can rotate based on 90 degrees, or you can, this is what I was going to use it for. Uh, um, step snap, which I can turn on. And then this will snap in right now by 15 degree increments. So if you wanted to do something like that, you know, you can see. Yeah, we're not going to fit all these without me either making the fuselage a little bit smaller or something like that, which I was trying to avoid. I was really trying to avoid that. You can all, again, you can also set a bunch of settings in um, Maya to to put things based on faces. Again, I don't like doing it because I don't think Maya does a great job sometimes of placing things. Um, but if we were to set this to layout and then what you could do, I'll save this because I'm probably going to undo this. But what we could do is we could select these all these faces and we could, you know, maybe I'll get pleasantly surprised. Um, we can come in here and go layout and do a uh, option box. And we can, I'm going to reset my settings just in case. So unfold and there should be also an option where you can change, maybe I'm thinking of something different. I think it's already set up to preserve 3D ratios. So if I do uh, apply layout UVs or apply, see, it didn't do a bad job. So it didn't do it didn't do a bad job at all. Um, it's inefficient um, in the regards where it did some of these things, but it didn't do a bad job. I mean, definitely you can see it saved time. Um, I like what it did in some parts. Unfortunately, I don't like what it did in others. Um, so let's. See, I mean, I'm gonna try to set if I like it to save time for us. Um, you know what? Let's just let's save ourselves some time. Um, so again, uh, UV select this modify layout UVs apply. So I'm just looking to see where I put things. So I resized things, repositioned them. It did a good job actually. I mean, it's better. I don't like what it did in some areas, but um, it did a good job, and that's because we spent the time to at least hand, you know, hand move these and get them all positioned. So it did a great job. Um, so you can see, there we go. Doesn't look that bad. We got this all set up. So yeah, I'll go ahead and go with this, you know, because you know, it'll probably take me about ten, fifteen minutes to get this all moved. And the advantage of if you do it by hand, if this was like a, you know, like a character, like this is a lot of, this is a lot of dead pixels, a lot of dead pixels. Um, which means this is wasted space, which is costing you on, if you're doing game engines and stuff like this, you know, it can cost you. But this isn't terrible, it's just you could get more out of this. So that's all. Um, but for the sake of time, we'll go ahead and go with this. So the next step, um, actually, is to export this and use it in a program of your choice. I'll be using Photoshop, um, is to export this as a map that you can take into a program like Photoshop and actually paint on top of it. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you how to export it and then that'll conclude this video and then we'll, we'll pick up the, the, the actual painting part in another application. So um, to export this, you select the object in object mode. Now if you built a rocket out of multiple objects, you can export the, the, the projection for those as well. Um, um, but you just have to have all those objects selected. And you don't want pieces of it selected, because if you do that, if you select pieces, then it'll only export those pieces. So select it in object mode. Um, if you have multiple objects, i.e. it's in a group, make sure you select all the objects when you were to export it. So to export it, it's actually very simple. Again, just have an object mode. Go to Image, UV Snapshot. And it's automatically, um, generally it wants to put it in the... Uh, uh, the source, uh, sorry, the images folder. Mine is defaulted to the, to the desktop, so I usually almost export all my stuff to the desktop. So you know what? I'll go ahead and do it. You know, before um, I'll go ahead and put it into the images folder of my project. So cartoon rocket ship images, and I'm just going to call it out UV. So it's just the name it likes to give it. I kind of kept that. Hit save. So it's going into my cartoon rocket ship images folder out UV. 
Um, there's lots of different files you can save it as. I usually just save it as a JPEG. Um, and then depending on the size you want to put it, um, I usually do 2048, or even if you're, you know, if you have a beefy computer, do like a 4096. Um, you do obviously want to keep this um, by cubic, you know, powers of two. Um, and you know, like I said, this is probably good, so I'm just going to hit apply and close. And what's going to do is it'll create a texture in that folder. I'll go close this. I'll go show you guys. Uh, there's my video that uploaded from last time. And then go to cartoon. That's the old one. Cartoon rocket ship images. And you can see out UV right there. All right. So a couple other things I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and rename this. I'm just going to call it rocket ship. Um, uh, really, that's well, it looks like it might need to center the pivot point. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Yes, center pivot point. Oh, it's because the fins are off now. Um, I would manually move this pivot point to be here, but the fins are causing it to throw it off now. There we go. There. So, there we go. Looking good. All right. So, in the next video, um, like I said, we will we will talk about painting this. Um, so, in the meantime, give that stuff a shot. Um, build this however you want. Get your UVs laid out, and then we will talk about painting. Um, in the next one, in, at least in my case, I'll be using Adobe Photoshop. So until then, keep on creating and uh, have a great, a great time in, in Maya.